and carry her into the corner of the field, which was a dumping ground though for rubbish. Yeah. And cover her up with straw. Rosemary's parents hope to see their daughter a grown woman by now, with children of her own. I'd lay in bed some nights and I'd think of what he'd done to a girl of mine. I mean, once you lose a daughter, you lose a part of you. To be honest with you, I don't think anybody saw that capability from that guy. To sexually assault him, yes. But to go any further than that, then I don't think anybody saw that side of him. Yeah. She was a great little kid. Very outgoing, happy. This is where Jefferson got his advantage, right? We'd interviewed numbers of people for murder. We'd never had anybody who'd been so explicit and who was obviously out to, to shock and make us complicit in his world and to see whether we got some pleasure perversely out of what he was telling us. I felt he was a truly evil person. A criminal psychologist was advising the police interrogators. He said Jebson would only confess if they unraveled his world of fantasy and lies. Something that ran throughout the interviews with Jebson was a juxtaposition of reality and fantasy uh, in his world, where names and places and times would become changed. In other words, he edited out in his own mind anything that would have caused him pain. It's a way in which he actually can distance himself from responsibility, from feelings of guilt, and it may be how he deals with the horror of the murders. The clearest example of this was a recurring dream that Jepson had fashioned during 25 years in prison. I'm on a swing, and little Nicola is laughing and clapping. Stop. And I land right smack bang beside Nicola, who's like a precious china doll to look at. Blonde hair to a little bump. Slim. Put my arm around him. I said, you want to come? No, she says. Yes, you do. And then the next thing I know, we're walking down this lovely floral path. As if operating on a cloud. And we come to this lovely house. The house of paradise. What house, Ron? The house of paradise. What? Lost me. Well, where is the house of paradise? No, I don't, I don't mean... Could you explain to this gentleman about the house of paradise? It's the perfect house because you've got the perfect child yeah. in the perfect location. Yeah. Paradise. Got it. And we go in. We have a laugh and joke. And then it's bedtime. And then we go upstairs to bed. And we perform in the bedroom. Everything. No problems at all. Does force ever enter the dream? Never at all. So it's all the, the, the child in the dream? Oh, it's all willing, all the way down the line. Always a willing partner. And then the face just blows up, as if an explosion's happened. And all I'm seeing is stars. And then blackness. And it was the same dream in time after time after time. Was there a face to that girl? Yes. And who was that? Rosemary. Rosemary? Right. By now, detectives believe Jebson's fantasies were cover stories for other unreported attacks. Michaela Odwell had stayed silent for 25 years prior to the investigation. She'd been Rosemary Papa's best friend at school. Aged eight, she saw Jebson the night Rosemary was murdered. He said his car had broken down in Hartford and could he stay the night? He had this white jumper on 
and it had a blood mark around here. And he said he cut his finger. We didn't realise then he'd murdered Rosemary. The next day, Michaela's sisters went to school, but she had a cold and stayed home in bed. I heard the stairs creak and he stood in the doorway. He says to me, do you want to play a game? I said, what kind of game? Before I could do anything, he had pinned me to the bed. It seemed like it was going on forever. I'm screaming for help. He just basically was enjoying it. His eyes were bulging. He was smiling as well. And he said, every woman and every child knows what they've got between their legs and they know what it's for and you're going to enjoy this. We heard the back door go, so my mother, she'd come in. And he put Tempe in my pocket. So if I ever tell what has happened to me, he would kill me. He's killed once and he will kill again. And he told me he'd kill Rosemary. And I'll never forget that because I was so shocked. And I've come to realise over the years I would have been his next victim. Jepson was arrested for Rosemary's murder just hours later. That dreadful day is long gone, but its legacy remains. I was a very slim child, very pretty, until that day. And I piled on the pounds so no one could get close to me again. I've had relationships, but they've only lasted three or four months because I wouldn't sleep with any of them. I couldn't stand my back or my backside being touched because he did that. I don't think I'll ever have children. And I don't think I'll ever be married either because I just can't trust anyone. And he's taken all that away from me. And that's something I can never forgive. After the break, how police finally solved the 30-year mystery of who killed the babes in the wood. The challenge now for detectives was finding new ways to get Jebson to talk afresh about the murders of Gary Hanlon and Susan Blatchford, the babes in the wood, but their interrogation rested on a knife edge. I believe that you were more involved than you tell us. I want you to be honest with us, Ron. I don't I've been I'm, honest all the way down the I'm, line. I'm not but if you're going to try and drag me in... Ron, listen to me. No, I'm not no, 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 no. Let me finish. Okay. If you're going to try and drag me in on this double murder, I will terminate the interview and fuck off back to Wakefield and then let you dig your own cases out. Ron, Ron, what do you mean drag you into something? I'm simply asking you to be honest with us. Ron. I am being honest. Well, okay, I'm not, I'm not called you a liar, am I? No, but you're good as. I'm not called you a liar. No, fuck it. No, uh, Ron, don't get me handed. 4.26, stop in the tape. How could the detectives get under Jebson's guard? The breakthrough finally came when they showed interest in a recurring feature of his crimes, something that harked back to his childhood days. We looked at the issue of hides, shelters, and this played a great part in Jebson's vision, his fantasy. He was given his head, so to speak, and he talked and talked about hides. You walk into a wood, you're going to build a hide. Educate me, Ron. Educate right. me. Willow. Yeah. Nice willow branches. Yeah. And you tie them down to the ground. So you make an arch. Right. So you bring one this way, and you bring one that way. Yeah. So you've got a circle of eight. When you're in the hide, yeah, are you the little boy again? I'm that little boy again. Little long girl jumping lives in safety, paradise. Nobody can get at him. Let's draw a little bit of a separation here. Who am I talking to? Now you're talking to Big Ron. Right. But Little Ron is always in the background. It hit us totally by surprise that you had two competing forces, two elements, two personalities 
within Ronald Jebson, Jekyll and Hyde. And when one overrode the other, then that led to murder. This new insight into Jebson's personality seemed to explain why he had been so difficult to pin down. It was decided to make one final push for a confession to the Babes in the Wood murders. I think we're communicating for the first time. Right. You understand what yeah. I'm saying? Do you feel that? Yeah. Right. We've been talking talk about children. Yeah. Who have I been talking to? Little Rod. So it's Little Rod that's doing the children, is it? Yeah. The Enfield kids have got Little Rod's hallmarks all over them. Strange Little Rod. I don't want Big Rod to interfere with Little Rod here. Okay? The old bank was talking about with the two Enfield kids. Little Ron did, did it? Yeah. It's Little Ron that's telling you the truth. Little Ron is telling you the truth. We're close, Ron. I know we're close, but as I say, as Big Ron said, he had nothing to do with them. Did Little Ron have anything to do with Little Ron didn't have nothing to do with them either. If I said to you that people think that Little Ron did, would you be upset with me? Yes, I would. Very upset. Let me tell you what I see when I look at you. Let me tell you. I see that little boy that someone has brutalised. Yeah. And using your words, 